Okay, now this is really fascinating. I'm by the water, and... Oh, hold on. Okay, this is fascinating. I'm by the water, and look at these. Most of them look like wood ducks of some kind. Like, there's the male wood duck, I'd imagine. And then there's some mallards. You know how the mallards are the pretty one with the green? The wood ducks, too. The males. Not that the females aren't pretty, too. You know why they do that in, in nature. It's so the females can hide and protect the nest. Or so that I was told once. Here they are, if they come up close. I won't try to scare them. Again, when you think about domesticated city birds like this, people feed them. And so they're more likely probably to come up close and to socialize and to show off their pretty plumage. I think that's very special too. You know, we had ducks when we were little and geese. Not like these, they weren't the same kind of ducks in California. And I'm fascinated by their behavior. Sometimes you see solitary ducks. Like I see one swimming out there by itself. And I wonder, I wonder what brought that about. Oh, here's one swimming up next to it. But again, they usually flock together. Ducks. Especially, you know, ducks are, well, they're migratory birds, so they're social. And you see that similar ducks stay with similar ducks. Even though every once in a while you see the other ducks mingle in with them. But they usually flock together, like that saying goes. I suppose you could say that for some cultural similarities, that's true too. That yes, while they do mix in the same pools, but sometimes they stay together. I'd like to see them all mixed up, be more social, but nature has a way What's different about city birds, these birds migrate, or some of them do. Interesting, oh, they rent a red, red-winged blackbird. You know, I had a couple of those spirit guides once. Took me into the forest with them. Well, and of course the Basilica is over there. Oh, let's see. You, oh. uh, this camera's so weird sometimes. It just does whatever. But these birds, fascinating ducks. Oh, you saw that one. You saw that one fly away. And now there's algae, and well, I would call it. Sometimes I call it pond scum. This is really kind of an, a different kind of, it's a man-made lake or a pond, and it's got filtration systems in it to keep the algae and the stuff at a certain level. I don't know it, <coughs> if they ever treat the lake for like mosquitoes or for bugs. It'd be interesting to see if they do, you know, to, Oh, the ducks don't like that. They're saying, do not, you know. Of course, because they like to eat the larvae and the stuff of insects. Yeah. They're not happy with that. See, there's a delicate balance. Nature keeps a delicate balance. If, if left to its own devices, it would weed out sickness. Sure, there'd be more bats and stuff, but 
bats are good because they control mosquito population. And the ducks. Oh, I see a beer can in the uh, in the water, just floating on the algae. I'm sure the ducks stay clear of that. And well, now all the ducks left from this side. I'm sitting on this dock that's kind of it's wobbly, so it's kind of a float, one of those floating docks. You know, and while the ducks are used to having people around them. They don't like to be frightened. And if you sit still and speak in a calm manner, they will come by and show you their pretty plumage. They're almost showing off, it's cute. Well, and so they should, they're beautiful. I, what's rare sometimes, and I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if there's albino wood ducks. I'll have to look into that. At one time they said blue eyes were a mu mutated gene, but they've said a lot of things about genetic things in, in humanity and in beings. Nature has a way of taking care of genetic anom anomalies too in human beings. Well, before the advent of some surgeries and some risky procedures, you know what happened. Oh, I'm going to try to get a picture of the water. Oh, there's the little guys. These ones over here. Oh, well, you can see these markings, too. So, we talked about the albino squirrel. I call it the elusive albino squirrel. And maybe some people consider him commonplace. Not to me. I don't know if anybody's taken a tally of the um, number of albino squirrels in Minneapolis. I'd be interested to know exactly which numbers they have. It would be hard to track them too. It would take a team of people. But then again, you think, do you track wild animals like that? Most of the city squirrels have, have adapted to their environments. And the ducks, too. They're city ducks. While they're here in the city. Well, they know where to go for food and stuff. They're smart ducks. And since there's no hunting here, it's pretty safe. Except there's a raccoon that lives, two of them that live in that tree over there. I've seen them before. Those little rascals, you know, they're raccoons. Well. Oh, yes. They are. She's saying that they get their eggs every once in a while. She's not happy, but. I think those two raccoons in this pond create a lot of trouble for the other wildlife. They're saying yes. But that's part of. They know that they're needed. You know, raccoons are important. They call them little bandits, you know. Fascinating. Just Again, I don't have a really good camera and that's not important. If you're doing research for school or stuff, use whatever you got. If it's your cell phone and you got to make a report, an eye report on something, go out and do it. Say, this is injustice, and I want my story heard. Well, and before the advent of cameras and cell phones and stuff, really reporting was done all by hand. And I remember either writing it and then using a typewriter. And listen, I was not a good typewriter. 
I mean a typist. I did not take that class in high school. That was one class I said, no. I, I suppose they call it a keyboarder or whatever they call it now. They're beautiful. And while you can't see their feet underneath, you know that they're offset towards the back paddling, paddling, paddling. Because you can see the streams of water. You know how they move in that wake that they have. It's beautiful. It's like a triangle behind them. I could sit and watch it for hours. And they make little ripples. <coughs> and sometimes the ripples cross other duck's ripples. And so then they make these patterns and they're really beautiful to see. Again, once in a while, you'll see one lone duck, like I see one right now. She is all by herself. Well, it looks like she's been under the water, too, though, because her hair, her feathers are a little bit wet. I just wonder what they do when they go off by themselves. They usually rejoin. They're like, they rejoin right now. Interesting though, they usually stay together. Like, like groups of them flock together. Where that's that saying. Birds of a feather flock together. I'm not sure many people have done research in Loring Park on squirrels and water ducks. Or maybe people just take for granted that they're always here. Oh, here's the, what's fascinating about red-winged blackbirds and tall grass and marsh grass is they go into it and they land close to the water and sometimes they go to the top and they'll climb up it. But sometimes they have nests in there. I used to watch them in the country all the time. Fascinating birds too. Well, anyways, it's getting kind of cold. I should probably get home, talk about something else. Oh, I'm going to talk about my experience doing this. That's what I'll talk about. Okay, I'll talk to you later. One last look. Well, there's my shoes. My Keens, you know, I have, like, today it was warm enough that I was like, I've got to wear some sandals. Dublin shirt. You know. I've had that forever. Literally. But sometimes I feel like I got dragged out of the DNA pools of history to come whatever. You know. Well, we talked about DNA coding. Or encoding. And decoding. And then the cosmic birth cycles and the great cosmic mother and father somewhere up there beyond beyond this world and the next weaving tapestries really karmic lives there it went there were some old legends about spirits that could assume the shape of animals to mingle with them for a... I suppose I should not speak of that. I just got scolded by the... Yeah, there they go. They're not happy. Well, that is of another matter. That's spirit talk. And I will not trespass on their... their knowledge. It's fascinating. I just, like I said, I could sit here for a while. There's something, too, about this city when the sun hits it right in this time of the year, it changes the colors 
of the building. And I know, you, you see how different this camera looks versus the one I was using earlier? Lots different, like the screen looks different. And my skin tone looks different. My hat doesn't look as black as it really is. <coughs> and even the sky looks a little It's alright though. We'll talk about that another time.